Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings. And the other floods. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is Lord. God sent me here to preach to you about Jesus Christ. Hoping that some of you will give your life to Jesus Christ today. Amen. Today's message is mindset. Mindset. What is your mindset? Our mindset is very important because just as God is speaking to us today, God also speaking to our mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 8, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the spirit, Set the minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who live in the flesh cannot please God. My question to you is this, who is controlling your thinking? Well, if your mind is not set on the spirit, then Satan is influencing your thinking. Absolutely. It is where your danger of your mindset is at, anger, lust, greed, hatred, all this thing begins in the mind, temptation always begins in our desires and then find helper in our thoughts. If they are not controlled by the Spirit of God, James tells us in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. And then after desire have conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So it is important, we all remember that temptation in itself is not a sin. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 tells us that Jesus was tempted in every way as we are, but never sinned. Do Christians sin? Yes. But Christians are not owned by sin anymore. Those chains were broken by Jesus at the cross. God did what the Lord could not do. Jesus set us free from sin. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For it is by the gospel which liberates us, and given on the Holy Spirit is the equivalent of having God's law written in our heart, so that we no longer live by the letter of the law, but by the Spirit who dwells within us. Today, I want you to see the two contrasts between the mind controlled by the sinful nation and the mind controlled by God's Spirit. First, the mind controlled by the sinful nation. The Bible says clearly in Romans chapter 8, verse 5, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. The human heart is set on sin ever since Adam and Eve fall in the garden. Because their mind was set on sin, today we can hear loss, greed, hatred, desire so easily because since the fall, our heart is too towards sin. My natural desire is because of my disobedience. My flesh here clearly 
what passionate desire speaking to me. Yes, I know the law. Yes, I might know what is right and wrong. But my nation says, forget about that. Do what you want. That's what the flesh is speaking to us today about. For any individual who have not been set free from the law of sin and death by the spirit of life, sin is driving force of your decision making. And selfishness is the filter for your direction and at least the one destination death. That's the reason why the Bible says the mind of a sinful man is dead. The sinful mind is hostile to God. He does not submit to God's law, nor can he do so. Those who are controlled by the sinful nation cannot please God. So pay attention. If you are owned by your sinful nation, you do not make God upset. You do not make him unhappy. You cannot please him. You are still subject to his wrath. You cannot praise him. You cannot praise him, period. Paul makes this clear in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. He says, You are dead in trespasses and sin, in which words you walk, following the cause of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of the servant, and both we are one slave, in passions of our flesh, carrying desires of the body and the mind. And we're by nation of wrath, like the less of mankind. Those who are living in the flesh cannot please God. It is split, it is split here before Christ came. We have a mindset of what they think. We are living according to the word flesh wanted. We are under the ownership of the small G God of this world, the devil himself. What do you set your mind on? Those who live according to the same nation have said their way of thinking. Sin is acceptable. Sin is persuaded in the same part of their thinking over and over and over again. It is easy for them to find to sin. Do circumstances influence my thinking? Absolutely. Do people influence my thinking? Yes. We are prone. So let our thought, yes, when we are depressed, stress out or, gr or grieving. It is not a natural. Here is the difference for those who are living their sinful lifestyle and those who are living by the Spirit. The mind that is controlled by God's Spirit is at peace. Remember that the mind covered by the flesh is dead, it is hostile to God. We not submit to God's law. It cannot, it is impossible. And you cannot please God in this realm. But the mind that is God by the Spirit, the Bible says, is life and peace. Just Christ said in John 3, verse 3, Very, very, I said to you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. And here is why, in verse 6 and 5 and 6, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they have been born of water and spirit. The flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. We are not just sick of our sins before Christ. We are dead in our sins. We live by the flesh. We are separated from God. So it is impossible for us to clean up our hearts and place Him. We think selfishly we live selfishly and the mind that is set on the flesh the bible says it is dead that's the reason why we should live in the spirit to please god our mindset is not just changed because we know what is right or wrong and they choose to do what is right in our own strength no our mindset changes because we change the way we live we see God's commandment and we see God's kingdom and we enter through the new bed in water and spirit. Yes, our minds are changed with the life and peace that is in control by God's spirit. Listen carefully, friends. Dead man and woman will not have life until they are resurrected and those who cause us, we are at war 
will never have peace until you surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. Are you willing to do that? All you have to say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior. I believe that you died for my sin and that you rose again. You are in heaven and when I die, I'll be with you. Please give me your whole spirit that I may live for you. So you see, friend, if you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. You must be born again. Literally born from above. Everyone in this world is God's creation, but he only becomes your father. You only become his child if you are born again through the Holy Spirit. But even as God's children, our thought has to be brought under his lost leadership. And since our thought is controlled action, it's essential we operate by the kingdom thinking instead of what they're thinking. Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not watching war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, that is, they are not carnal, but have a divine power to destroy stronghold. We destroy argument and every lofty opinion rise against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ and be ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Both the mind that is set by the Spirit, the filter of the child of God uses to control their thinking is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit leading. We surrender all our bodies and our heart to Him. We cannot live by conforming the way of the world, no. But we should live by transforming our mind and our heart to the word of God. That's really why Apostle Paul said, do not conform to the standards of this world. Amen? Jesus Christ says, you know the truth, and it will make you free. That truth is the word of God. Satan will rather have us live in fear, in anger, in anxiety, and our mind and our heart filled with turmoil. But here is a great advice by Apostle Paul. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. And he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses our understanding, guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then he said, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, God bless you, sir. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day, sir. And whatever is commendable, if anything is excellent, if anything is praiseworthy, he says, think about such things. Whatever you have heard and learned and received from me, he says, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace in Jesus Christ will be with you. My dear friends, set your heart, set your mind on the God's spirit and you will have peace and life. The man blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is Lord. Have a wonderful day.